In the eleventh year of Shaoxing, Emperor Zhao Go of Song issued twelve consecutive gold medals and summoned Yu Fei, who was on the northern expedition, back to the palace. At the same time, Qin Hui, the great calligrapher of the Song dynasty and Qin Xiangya, who was under the command of Ping Zhangshi, was planning an unfounded charge for Yu Fei. Unexpectedly, a small setback occurred. In the twelfth year of the Han dynasty, Emperor Lu Bang passed away. When he opened his eyes again, he found himself in a completely unfamiliar country. After a lifetime of fighting, can I finally enjoy it? Keywords of the novel I, Emperor Gaozu of Han, actually traveled through Emperor Gaozong of Song. Without a pop-dot-up window, I, Emperor Gaozu of Han, actually traveled through Emperor Gaozong of Song. Download the complete set of TXT, I, Emperor Gaozu of Han, actually traveled through Emperor Gaozong of Song. Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Re-Emperors You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Re-Emperor's Song, Linen City Outside the palace of the emperor today, there are now many ministers standing. The big guy had a serious expression on his face and the cold lotus seed soup sent by someone from the food bureau was not touched by anyone. For a long time, the gate of the dormitory was opened, and in an instant, everyone gathered around it. The old eunuch inside looked around and then whispered. Qin Xiang, please have a conversation inside. The skinny old man led by Qin Hui, who is currently under the command of the general secretary of the Song dynasty, is Qin Xiangya. Please wait outside the door, gentlemen. After speaking, Qin Hui waved his long sleeves and walked straight into the palace. How about it? The old eunuch frowned heavily and said, the three eunuchs have all seen it, and they are all helpless. No way. Qin Hui looked inside, but was blocked by a tent and couldn't see anything. Could it be that the officials have reached a point where medicinal stones are difficult to solve? Not really, the eunuch leaned close to this Qin Xiangya and said in a voice that could only be heard by each other. The imperial physician said that the official's family is not in trouble, and there is no need to use medicine. No problem. No problem, how could you have been sleeping for so long? It's not surprising that Qin Hui, who has always been calm, lost his composure. It's been a full five days since the emperor fell in the head while playing Kuju. Most of the imperial physicians in the palace have come, but so far they have not been able to awaken the emperor. Do you think so Qin Hui suddenly had some bad thoughts in his heart? Yu Fei's eyes saw that he should arrive in a few days, and the envoy to negotiate peace in the south was also on his way. There is still no consensus on whether Yu Fei will kill or not, and to what extent the peace agreement has reached. Zhao Laojiu never faints in the morning or at night, but unfortunately, he fainted at this time. Are you thinking of letting yourself bear the blame alone? The more I think about it, the greater the possibility. After all, no one knows his own emperor better than Qin Hui. That's all for it, thank you, Grandpa. If the official family wakes up, please make sure to let me know as soon as possible. That's nature, that's nature, the old eunuch hastily accepted it. As soon as Qin Hui left, a group of people immediately gathered around him. Xiangya, how is the official family doing? After looking at the person speaking, Qin Hui sighed softly. The Holy Communion is unobstructed, let the lords disperse here. This the courtiers glanced at each other, but saw Qin Hui's face cold. Although he had countless doubts in his heart, no one dared to ask further. When Qin Hui really left this place, everyone felt a little more at ease and dispersed. The outside of the palace quickly quieted down, and by the time the old eunuch went out to change shifts, it was already dark. And at this moment, in the palace. If the throne is given to the second, don't make things difficult for the third. After all, he is still young and doesn't know anything. Chi Ji, that mother dot in dot law knows nothing. You saved her life, it's my old Lu who owes you a favor. Crying and crying, what's there to cry about? There's no one in this world who can't die. 
I used to wield a three-foot sword and conquer this land for your mother and son. In this lifetime, I can truly say that I have no regrets. Over the years, you have also suffered. As Lu Bang's hand caressed LVG's wrinkled face, his voice gradually lowered. In April of the twelfth year of the Han Dynasty, Emperor Taizu, Lu Bang, passed away at the Changle Palace in Chang'an at the age of sixty-two. When he opened his eyes again, he saw this unfamiliar place. Damn it, didn't you say not to live sacrifice? Why is this room full of people? LVG, this stinky woman, once I die, I won't be obedient. When you come down, how will I deal with you when I see you? But when he saw the decorations around him clearly, he couldn't help but sigh. After all, it's still a couple's affair, and there are quite a few rare objects in this tomb. Touching the pendant hanging from the bed curtain, Lu Bang immediately recognized that it was made of gold. Finally, the drowsy palace maid holding the lantern discovered that her own emperor had actually sat up. She rubbed her eyes and after confirming that she had read correctly, she exclaimed in surprise. The official family is awake. What the ghost roars at. Lu Bang gave her a hard pat on the buttocks. But then, the touch between his palms startled him in place. Why is it so real? So, regardless of whether the palace maid had already turned red, he continued to slap her twice. That's not right. He waved his hand a few more times and found himself waving his palm much faster without any feeling of difficulty. It's like going back to my thirties. Looking at his hands again, there were no wrinkles on the smooth back of his hand. Even in the darkness, under the light of the candle, he could clearly perceive the delicate skin. It's like a girl's hand. At this moment, more and more people were attracted by the shouting of the palace maids. Lu Bang watched as more and more people came in, and he calmed down. The three imperial physicians, carrying medicine boxes, bowed to Lu Bang and said. Your Majesty, have you ever felt any obstruction? MMM Lu Bang instinctively touched the location of his arrow wound, and after confirming that the previously tormented wound was gone, he was extremely happy. No problem. I am no problem now. The three chief physicians breathed a sigh of relief and said, Your Majesty's great fortune, God bless the official family. After all, Lu Bang has not figured out the situation yet. But after all, he is a master who pretends to be confused, and at this moment he has not shown any abnormality. After the three of them left with some remedies to repair their bodies, he turned around and looked at the palace maid. Officials and Families the little palace maid has only been transferred to the palace for half a month. Previously, she said her own emperor was not good at that, but now it seems that the rumors outside about the emperor are mostly false. Why are you blushing? Find me a mirror. Yes. After taking the mirror, Lu Bang saw the face inside clearly, and various emotions surged into his heart. Either surprised or happy, or fearful or sad. After looking at the person in the mirror for a long time, Lu Bang suddenly burst into laughter. I have given birth and even become an emperor so goddamn. Although it may seem like I have lived a few years less, including my previous life, I am still not at a disadvantage. Damn it, in my previous life, I just went to the battlefield and was almost dead when I was forced to fight by LVG. In this life, it's time for us Lao Lu to enjoy ourselves. Having made up his mind, Lu Bang looked at the little palace maid, whose shyness had not yet faded from her face. Some are afraid, and there are also some expectations. Lu Bang cleared his throat and said, hurry up and remove your armor. Don't neglect it. Seeing the palace maid's eyes showing great confusion, Lu Bang finally realized that he had spoken the wrong lines. Take off. After speaking, Without waiting for the palace maids to take action, he began to take action on his own. Just as he was about to pounce, a eunuch burst in. Upon seeing this scene, the eunuch couldn't help but secretly exclaim in shock. When did the official family regain such a strong aura? No matter how shameless Lu Bang is, it is inconvenient to continue at this moment. 
What's up with you? Words are filled with displeasure. The eunuch quickly bowed and said, Your Majesty, the Prime Minister has arrived. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Virtuous Kings and Loyal Officials You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Virtuous Kings and Loyal Officials Watching This Old Man Come In, Thin Like a Monkey Liu Bang knew that this was the Prime Minister of his own country. Being able to achieve the position of the Prime Minister of a country is not necessarily a coward. In front of him, one must be careful not to be seen by him. Speak more wrongly, and wait for less to speak later. With this idea in mind, Liu Bang sat upright and stopped speaking. And Qin Hui. He saw the Emperor lose his previous enthusiasm. At this moment, I began to ponder in my heart. Where did you go wrong recently? Taxation in Jiangxi. The military expenses in Hanzhong. Personnel of the Ministry of Personnel. Many possibilities surged in his mind, and Qin Xiangye couldn't figure them out for a moment, nor dared he speak rashly. This pair of monarchs and ministers, you see me, I see you, fell into an awkward silence in this palace. After all, Liu Bang spoke up first and said, I Ching is here in the middle of the night, but what's important? After seeing the emperor finally speak, Qin Hui breathed a sigh of relief and quickly bowed down, saying, I am mainly concerned about the official family's sacred body, and currently it is a tumultuous autumn, and everything still needs to be decided by the official family. Hmm. Liu Bang nodded. The old man was worried about his body, so he knew he was awake and rushed over immediately. But will the speed be faster? It's not his first day as an emperor, of course he won't just think about this person just because of a word of concern. On the contrary, the phrase, troubled autumn, caught his attention. The words are very fresh. What ideas do I need? Just tell me about the situation. Zhao Laojiu is really becoming more and more cunning. What is it that you don't know in your heart? Do you have to let me speak out in public so that others will know in the future? Are all the suggestions put forward by me, Qin Hui? However, when roast comes back to roast, Qin Hui is not slow at all. Is this the first thing, or is it the matter of the Jin envoy going south? Do the officials have any plans in mind? Liu Bang remained calm and said, What did A.I. Qin think? Qin Hui cursed Zhao Ji in his heart, both father and son are the same kind of person. After all, the Jin people took advantage of the situation. Although our Song army had a slight victory, it was not enough to affect the situation of Jin being strong and Song being weak. The official family of Wan Yan Zongbi is also aware of this person. As an ambitious person, if this peace negotiation does not go smoothly, it is feared that our Song dynasty will continue to fall into a war of war. On the contrary, if it were according to the Jin people's wishes, the coffin of the former emperor could be returned, and the two countries could be governed by dividing the river, establishing a lasting friendship between Qin and Jin. The people would not suffer from the war, and Yu Fei and others would not be able to take advantage of the chaos to raise private soldiers. So, officials, look. In just a few words, Liu Bang roughly understood the current situation. The state of song that I am in looks very weak. I can't even keep the coffin of my own emperor Liu Bang is aware of the principle that the situation is greater than the sky. If we can't fight, we can negotiate. It's not a shameful thing. Let's just discuss. He doesn't really want to fight anymore. Since the Jin people are powerful, let's avoid their sharpness and give them some benefits. It's just that if we give them the benefits, we really don't need to fight this battle anymore. Upon hearing this, Qin Hui was overjoyed. He was originally worried that the Jin people would demand too much this time. But now it seems that he still overestimated the bone hardness of his own emperor. That's natural, it doesn't cost a single soldier or soldier, to avoid the loss of life. Officials have great compassion. If the people know about this, they should be grateful for your majesty's foresight. 
Officials love the people like children, have a kind and benevolent heart, cherish the world, and live in harmony. All right, all right, Liu Bang waved his hand and interrupted him, what else is there? Yes, Qin Hui bowed again and said, do the officials have a decision on the matter of Yu Fei? When mentioning this name, Qin Hui deliberately lowered his voice. The main thing is to move this person, the pressure is really too great. If it weren't for the fact that the Jin dynasty had ordered his life and given Qin Hui ten courage, he wouldn't have dared to bring it up. If a mutiny of the Xianyang Central Army were to occur, Zhao Go would probably be the first to reveal himself. Liu Bang still looked like that. What does A.I. Qin think? Taking a soft breath, Qin Hui said, If Yu Fei is not eliminated, it will be difficult for the Jin army to settle down. Oh! Is he very good at fighting? Qin Xianya looked at his own emperor strangely and wondered if Yu Pengju could fight him. Aren't you clear about it yourself? Can fight, but so what? In terms of leading troops and generals, the ability to march and fight is naturally not weak. But he takes pride in his achievements and disobeys orders, he probably doesn't take the officials seriously in his heart. Furthermore, Han Shizhong, Lu Qi, and Zhang Jun are all capable of conquering and fighting. When will the Song army rely solely on him, Yu Fei? It must be the official strategic planning that can lead to victory for thousands of miles. Whether or not to eliminate Yu Fei is not really important, what matters is who should lead the central army without Yu Fei, which is the big deal. According to this little old man, Yu Fei is a person similar to Han Exian. Actually, even so, there's no need to kill. Of course, Liu Bang knew that Han Exian's death was a good thing for De Han. But does Han Exian have to die? It may have been too late to say this before, but now I am facing such a choice Liu Bang waved his hand and said, if there are any other things, let's talk about them together. The rest are small matters that I can handle on my own, but these two things. The officials can come up with a resolution soon. Yu Fei and Jin Shi are both on their way. Go on, go on, let me think about it. Qin Hui saw the emperor seriously pondering and knew that his goal had been achieved, so he retired. When Qin Hui retreated, Liu Bang's thoughtful head lifted up. He can figure it out before there is a ghost. He is still at a loss about the current situation. Official, do you want to use some rice? The eager voice of the palace maid came, and Liu Bang looked at her, but asked another question. Is this prime minister a good person? As soon as these words were spoken, the young palace maid was immediately frightened and knelt on the ground. Officials, I dare not speak recklessly about Qin Xiang. That's right, what can you know? The little palace maid had just breathed a sigh of relief when the emperor's voice rang out again. Go and find some books for me, and also send me a map of the Song dynasty. After a pause, he said again, if there are historians, let's call them over together. The little palace maid received the order and immediately ran out. At the same time, the eunuch who was also serving in the palace immediately spread the news. Qin Xianye's sedan chair had just left the palace gate, and the news from the emperor's bedroom had already arrived here. The abnormal behavior of his own emperor always made Qin Hui feel a bit strange. Especially, Zhao Laojiu actually asked a palace maid if he was a good person did you wake up with some after effects. After all, it hurt the head. But it's not right either. The emperor's speech and expression are all normal, not like he has a brain problem. Could it be? That something dirty got on it. After a moment of contemplation, Qin Hui spoke to the servant outside the sedan chair and said. Go to Lingyin Temple and invite a few senior monks over. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Sharp Review you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Sharp Review At the other end, Liu Bang stood in front of the map of the state of Song with a bowl of dompa braised pork, his mouth full of oil. I didn't expect pork to be so delicious. He is very satisfied with his life after being reincarnated. Behind him, officials from the living quarters, 
calendar office, and editorial office stood obediently waiting for orders. From the first glance, Liu Bang recognized this territory map, which was not much different from his own Han dynasty. Just upon closer inspection, I realized that starting from this section of the Huai River, someone had drawn a line with Cinnabar. That is to say, the current territory of the Song dynasty is only half of what is shown in this picture. Looking further north, there is a western Xia to the west, while the one to the north is the kingdom of Jin. He measured the original map of the Song dynasty with his hand, and couldn't help but take a cold breath from the current section of the Huai River. Surprisingly, so much has been lost. So this golden man. I'm afraid he's as invincible as the Qin prime minister said. He has never been interested in unbeatable opponents. Taking the handkerchief handed by the palace maid and wiping his hands, Lu Bang said. Have you ever heard of the great Han, everyone? Everyone looked at each other, wondering why their own emperor suddenly asked this question. But when the monarch asked, he had to speak up. The editing academy stood up and bowed, saying. Officials and officials are responsible for the part of Han history. History of Han Dynasty Although he was mentally prepared, upon hearing these two words, Liu Bang couldn't help but feel some pain. The rivers and mountains that have been worked hard are still defeated by these unscrupulous descendants. I just don't know if it's more than two. Tell me, tell me about the great Han. Although the editing institute is expensive, there are few opportunities to present it correctly before you. At this moment, the emperor spoke, and the official suppressed his excitement and said. Han Taizu, Emperor Gao, beheaded the white snake and rose up with a three-foot sword. Stop and stop, Lu Bang waved his hand and said, starting from after he died. Fortunately, official duties are not heavy on weekdays, and the history of the Han dynasty has already been printed in this person's mind. Interrupted by the emperor, he only paused slightly before continuing. Wait a minute. Lu Bang suddenly increased his volume, startled this person and didn't know which one of his words was wrong. Do you think that Mrs. LVG poisoned the third person while the second person was hunting? At this moment, the official was truly frightened. Han Gaozu gave birth to Prince Qi Lu Fei, who is the eldest son, second son Lu Ying, this is Emperor Hui of Han, King Zhao Lu Rui is indeed the third son. There's nothing wrong with this. Just the tone of the official family. Why is it like his son has died? Keep talking, keep talking. Lu Bang helped his forehead and sat down. For him, it was only a moment since he closed his eyes and heard his son die now. The official scrutinized his words and continued speaking cautiously. Wait a minute. What's going on? Lu Bang stammered, you said that LVG made Qi Ji. A human being. What is that? Taking a deep breath, the official continued. Cut off its hands and feet, gouge out its eyes, cut off its ears, administer its mute medicine, and make it reside in the toilet. He spoke more and more quietly, and by the end, there was no more movement. Because my own emperor has already covered his face and started crying bitterly. No one knows what happened, and we don't know where to start persuading at the moment. Just constantly shouting, official family is in mourning, official family is in mourning. I don't know how long I cried, but Lu Bang suddenly stood up from his chair and shouted angrily. Poisonous woman. Then he collapsed again, as if his strength had been drained. Speak up, speak up, I won't interrupt you this time. Even though his mind was steadfast, he also suffered a lot of decline under such a blow. But the advantage is that he can boldly accept anything he hears. When he heard Emperor Wu of Han beating the Xiongnu and Hua Tzubing sealing him as the wolf resident Su, his eyes slightly lit up. When he heard about Wang Mang's usurpation of the Han dynasty again, he thought that the Han dynasty was over, and that it had lasted for almost 200 years, which was not a great loss. Then it was from the rise of Guangwu to the rule of Mingzhang, and then to the three-legged tripod. Until Lu Chen killed his wife first and then committed suicide. Fortunately, I didn't end up being too cowardly. 
Two hours later, the official's throat was smoking, and Lu Bang seemed to have spent a long period of time. Not losing, not losing. The two Han dynasties combined have been 400 years. The last question is, how many years has it been since the great Han dynasty? To report to your majesty, including Shu Han, it has been nearly a thousand years. For a thousand years a thousand years have passed since I closed my eyes. Even though he had just experienced great sorrow and joy, he couldn't help but sigh, let someone talk about our dynasty. Listening to this passage, Lu Bang doesn't have much pressure anymore. The eunuch served tea to everyone and happily added a plate of melon seeds. Just say it. You know everything without hesitation, and if you make a mistake, I forgive you for not being guilty. A person stood out from the editing institute and bowed, saying. Emperor Ying Wu Shenguen Shende, the founder of our dynasty, has achieved unparalleled success in the destruction of later Shu, Southern Han, and Southern Tang dynasties since he was crowned with the yellow robe of Qin Xiao Post. After listening to the passage by Emperor Taizu of Song, Lu Bang commented. Although he has martial arts skills, bullying an orphan or widowed mother to ascend to power is not really a hero. As soon as these words were spoken, the vast palace immediately fell silent. Although you are a descendant of Emperor Taizong, is it too disrespectful to say so? An elderly official blinked at the living quarters, indicating that he didn't want to remember everything. Emperor Taizong's divine achievements, virtues, culture, and martial arts, conquered the northern Han dynasty, conquered Wu and Yu, and marched northward to conquer Liao. He achieved great cultural and military achievements. Well, Lu Bang nodded, please explain in detail how this throne fell into his hands. What happened after the big and small weeks? What are you kneeling for? Speak up. The officials may not have caused a madness. These words, your Zhao family will shut the door and say whatever they want. Who dares an outsider to interject? Lu Bang did not insist on forcing them to continue as he saw them in such a difficult situation. Anyway, if they don't say it, they will eventually understand it themselves. However, after listening to these eight emperors of the Song dynasty, how could they feel that each one was becoming more and more incompetent? Yes, if you can't win, then seek peace. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't find a reason after making a damn peace, you still won't be able to fight next time. This is a bit problematic. Besides, with such a large territory, if I were to start my own business, I'm afraid I would have to wake up from my dreams with a smile. So far, nestled south of the Yangtze River, one or two of them seem quite satisfied. This place has a big problem. By the time we finally talked about ourselves, it was already daylight outside. Lu Bang also got a rough idea of the current situation. Although these people always choose to say things that sound good, the hidden words are not necessarily pleasing at first glance. Breaking off the desire to seek knowledge from these people, Lu Bang himself became tired and asked everyone to retreat. Holding the palace maid who had been waiting all night, she went back to bed to rest. The prime minister's mansion outside the palace is not so idle anymore. Are you saying that officials, in front of everyone, say that our ancestors' emperors are not considered heroes? The messenger nodded, and Qin Hui sent him away, but his brow furrowed into a Chuan character. For a long time, after careful speculation by Qin Hui, he roughly knew the information behind this matter. The emperor has never had any offspring, so this throne seems to have to be restored to its previous lineage. And returning to the position is also something that some people in Chaoli have been insisting on. Now it seems that Zhao Laojiu can't help it anymore. Besides this possibility, Qin Hui couldn't believe why Zhao Go dared to say so, even though he was thinking it hard. Unless he's really crazy. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 No Common Sense You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 no common sense, what is your name? Do you have siblings in your family? What is your father's livelihood? 
Lu Bang hugged the soul of the little palace maid in his arms and asked three questions. He slept until almost the afternoon, feeling extremely comfortable. He hasn't felt this handy feeling for a long time. However, this body is still a bit weak, sweating profusely with just a slight movement, and still cannot match my original leather bag. This young palace maid has just started her career, and the blush on her face is still lingering. Just lying on the emperor's chest, he whispered. If you go back to the official family, my original surname was Wang, with a single, Chan, character. I am the eldest daughter of the family, and there is also a brother who makes a living by the West Lake. My father is the guard of Qiantang Gate in Linen City. Hmm. Lu Bang pondered, after all, he was the first person he saw in reincarnation, which could be considered some kind of fate. Furthermore, he urgently needs someone who can tell him the truth at the moment. Since we have engaged in marital affairs, what do you think I should do to you now? Lu Bang really doesn't know, but he also sincerely asks questions. But in Wang Chan's ears, it was a different flavor. The palace people often say. After Empress Xing fell into the hands of the Jin people, the officials no longer approached women. Since the funeral of Crown Prince Zhao Yi of Yuan, the emperor has had nothing to do. Everyone knows that whoever can give birth to a prince for the Zhao family can become the birth mother of the crown prince, prosperous and prosperous. I dare not ask for anything extravagantly, I only hope that the officials will not forget about me. Forget what? Lu Bang was very dissatisfied with these words. He, as a person who values emotions and righteousness, wouldn't have done something ruthless. Your father did the guarded work of raising your siblings, and it was extremely difficult for them to endure years of wind and sun. Now that you're with me, he doesn't know outside yet, and this matter can't be justified anywhere. I'm planning to go out for a stroll in a while, and I'll also meet my unmasked father. In law on the way. If there's anything I can do to help, I'll take care of myself. Just treat this trip as a private visit, it's not easy to reveal one's identity, and I'm afraid my father. In law won't trust me. You need to give me a personal item so that the elderly can rest assured. Listening to the emperor's incessant father. In law nowadays, Wang Chan's heart was almost melted. Where would you refuse to comply with the emperor's request? Take off the amulet hanging around your neck. This is what my mother obtained at the Daxiangguo Temple back then. I have been wearing it since I was young. If the official family sees my father and only shows him this, he will have no doubt. Lu Bang saw how sensible this girl was, and couldn't help but reward her well again. When I woke up, it was already laid outside and it was time for dinner. Just as he pushed open the palace gate, the battle outside startled him. The female eunuch stood outside full, with no one empty in their hands. The wooden plates they held were filled with various things, including new clothes and shoes, as well as jewelry and jewelry. Their faces were filled with joy. The older ones, the palace elders who had escaped from the Bianjing city in the past, wiped away their tears. Great joy! Great joy! When the official family of the Song dynasty had sex last time, Emperor Huizong was still alive. A senior eunuch approached and said, The officials have been busy all day, not even using a sip of tea and rice. The food bureau has already prepared the meal. This old eunuch speaks in a strange way. Knowing that he was mocking himself for doing that during the day, Lu Bang's old face blushed slightly, but soon returned to normal. The old eunuch didn't notice anything unusual and continued, saying. Wang Yangzi's side should receive several imperial edicts and titles, please let me know. Hmm. Lu Bang pretended to be thinking and threw the question back. What do you think? Well, the old eunuch lowered her eyebrows and eyes, probing, if I were to be granted the title of concubine, it would be well deserved. This is true, not to mention Jeyu. As the only woman in the imperial city who has been touched by the emperor, it is not impossible to give Wang Chan a higher position. Lu Bang couldn't distinguish the difference between them, so he nodded and said, Do as you say. That meal. 
I won't eat any more. I'm going out of the palace. The old eunuch was not in charge of this matter, and the young man who had been watching coldly stood up. Official, not allowed. This person Lu Bang knows, and he was also there when he asked for a question last night. From last night until now, this is the first person to say no to him. I originally thought it was very satisfying to be the emperor of the Song dynasty. There were no female tigers watching in the harem, and there were no people around who were not afraid of death to talk back. Now it seems that there is still a slight deviation from what he imagined. Who are you? Although puzzled by why the emperor asked this question, he honestly replied when he realized that the emperor had just injured his head. Chen Xinxing, a palace attendant. What are you doing? Responsible for recording your majesty's words and actions. Lu Bang nodded and took note, I want to leave the palace, why not? It's already late and there's a risk of trouble. What he said is not unreasonable. However, Lu Bang had already made a decision in his heart and did not intend to compromise. Do I have to go out then? Xin Seeing did not hesitate at all. I will truthfully record it in the Qijiu Zhu and hand it over to the Imperial Censorate. Based on his understanding of his own emperor, this matter should end here. After all, the officials of the Song dynasty spoke with no less power than the Jin people. But what Xin Seeing didn't expect was that the emperor, upon hearing these words, replied directly. Okay. Then he continued, by the way, please make arrangements for this trip. It is a private visit, no display, no disturbance to the public, and no letting too many people know. I will comply with the order. Xin Seeing's movements were quick, taking only a small stick of incense to light up the guards. At the same time, he informed the magistrate of Linen and asked him to dispatch additional personnel to maintain public order. Official, where are you going? I remember the place Wang Chan told me, Lu Bangdao on the carriage. Tang Gate, go to Tang Gate. After leaving the NEI and passing through Donghua Gate, there are not many people on this street, basically all the buildings of the imperial court. After passing through the Chaotian Gate, this half-lost country, the capital of the Song dynasty a thousand years later, was finally exposed to Lu Bang. It was already dark, but it could not stop the candle lights in the roadside buildings, a vendor pushing a small car, a girl wearing silk, and pedestrians coming and going. The further north we go, the louder these sounds become and the more people there are. Lu Bang is like a naive boy who has never seen the world before, and he is extremely curious about all of this. What is that person doing? Why are there so many people around? It should be a juggling artist who earns a share of shouting money. Where is it? What's cooking there? It tastes so delicious. Official, that stir frying, not cooking. So, those few people's costumes are so strange, and why is that? Xin Seeing looked at the emperor's finger and helplessly replied. Official, that's a Tibetan monk, no different from a Han monk. What is a monk? Halfway through this question, Lu Bang suddenly stopped talking. Xin Seeing didn't know how much his own emperor had been injured, but he knew that it was definitely not light. The things asked are not knowledge, but common sense one after another. But when the emperor's later question came up, Xin Seeing felt that he was wrong again. Zhao Guanjia, he doesn't even have common sense anymore. Do you mean our territory when you say, Han Di, dot? Lu Bang looked at him with a serious expression. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Paying Tolls You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Paying Tolls With the help of Xin Seeing, Lu Bang finally clarified the equivalent meaning between Han people, Han land, and China. The first time I felt this way was when I entered Xianyang, and the second time was when I ascended the throne through flooding, this is the third time. If he had changed his surname from Lu to Zhao, from Han to Song, it would have made him feel a bit uncomfortable. So now, he's getting used to it. On the other hand, Xin Seeing, who helped the emperor recall the origin of the Chinese character, 
also had mixed feelings in his heart. Shuo Bai Yun Han, Zhao Hui in the sky. The prosperous dynasty that our ancestors left in history is now as distant as the Milky Way in the sky. Both of them had thoughts in their hearts, but the carriage jolted and pulled their thoughts back. Yang Yijong, the commander of the palace command who had just participated in the Battle of Tuagao, stepped forward and said. Official, here we are. Lu Bang is very satisfied with his guard. Although I don't know his identity and name, just his burly figure gives people a very safe feeling. Lu Bang jumped off the carriage and saw the sign of Dali Temple hanging on the gate tower on his right side. In front of him was the Chiantang Gate. However, what puzzled him was that while the sky was already dark, the city gate was wide open, with a constant stream of pedestrians entering and exiting. This anyway, his main purpose of this trip is to see the capital city of the Song dynasty in a thousand years. Perhaps not closing the city gate is just a habit here. Although there was confusion in his heart, perhaps he didn't want to see Xian seeing silly gaze, so Lu Bang didn't ask any questions this time. But to Yang and Xian. Thank you for your hard work. Let's wait here. My old acquaintance is guarding the Chiantang gate here. There are too many of us, so don't surprise them. Xian seeing hesitated a bit. When did the emperor have such an old acquaintance? But upon seeing Yang Yijong, he immediately agreed and had to leave it to the emperor. Just adding a note to the daily routine is inevitable. After the emperor left, Xian Seeing coldly said. Mr. Yang, it's just a matter of officials being reckless. Why don't you let him do it? Yang Yijong remained silent, just looking at Lu Bang's back without blinking his eyes. Old Wang. Old Wang. Your son dot in dot law is coming to see you. Lu Bang shouted loudly, attracting the attention of passers-by. He just shouted several times, but no one came to answer him. Fortunately, there were other guards on the side, among which one person. When did old Wang have an extra son dot in dot law? Isn't his daughter working as a servant in the palace? Lu Bang smiled and said, Today's matter, I came to see my father dot in dot law right after getting married. Do you know where my father dot in dot law is, big brother? You are so brave. You dare to make fun of the old king's head. His donkey temper is unpredictable, so what can you do? After speaking, the person pointed to the outside and said, He's on duty outside. You can find it yourself. Here at Kayantangman, only the people who came in were checked, while those who went out were not asked. Lu Bang thanked this person and walked straight out of the city. Seeing that the emperor had disappeared, Yang Yijong was fine, and Xian Seeing had already become anxious. Mr. Yang, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and catch up. Yang Yijong still stared intently, but this time he replied to Xian Seeing's words. Officials have orders, and we all need to wait here. Foolish loyalty. Xian Seeing cursed angrily and wanted to leave on his own. But he was tightly held in place by the other people on the side. What are you doing? What does Lord Yang mean by this? Just now, the official, Yang Yijong finally turned his head, it was an edict issued to us together. Xian Seeing couldn't even struggle, so he kept saying words like, complaint, and, memorial, in his mouth. And Lu Bang, who walked out of the city, recognized old Wang at a glance. It's not because he looks similar, but because this old man is the only one here. At this moment, the old man held a long spear in his hand, and two monks stood in front of him. The older one was about his own age, while the younger one was only about eleven or twelve years old. There are Tibetan monks first, judging from their attire, they should be Han monks. As he got closer, the voice of old Wang's head reached his ears. There is neither a guide nor a reason, you cannot enter this city. The little monk's voice was still somewhat childish. But last time we didn't come, and we also entered. Why can't we enter this time? Last time was last time. If you enter the Chiantang gate at night, you need a guide. 
you have to rely on it. If you don't, you won't be allowed to enter. Unless. Old Wang chuckled and lowered his voice. Lu Bang walked even closer before he heard him say. When I was in Bianjing before, the old man burned a lot of incense for the Xianghua temple. When I met the masters who came to seek alms, I also tied my fate. Nowadays, everyone's life is not easy. Why don't the two masters return my fate to me today? Don't you like to say, good deeds are rewarded with good deeds the most? My good deeds are thanks to the blessings of both of you, old man. Although Lu Bang didn't understand what Hua Yuan meant, the expression and tone on Lao Wang's face were not unfamiliar to him. This old boy is here to collect tolls. My father got in. Law is too much. If you encounter a spy who is meticulous and pays for someone to enter this city gate, Lu Bang has always been helping his relatives without caring about such matters. So he stepped forward to help, saying, This person is right. Where in the world can we eat for free? Since we need to pass through the city gate without any proof, we should pay for this fate, we should pay for it. All three of them were startled by Lu Bang. Old Wang originally wanted to curse a few words, but when he spoke to him, his attire was also extraordinary, giving him a bit of confidence. Did you hear what this Xianggong said? It's not that I'm going to make things difficult for you, it's just that rules are rules, it's not easy to break them casually. The older monk, since Lu Bang came out, his eyes have been fixed on him without moving a bit. Seeing him feeling a bit uneasy, Lu Bang was about to curse when he heard a sigh in his ear. Turning to his senses, he saw that all three of them were looking as usual. The great monk clasped his hands together and bowed to himself, saying, Amitba Buddha. As I have heard, subdue their hearts. Bodhisattvas have appearances, that is, they are not bodhisattvas. After speaking, he took out another booklet from the cloth bag hanging on his shoulder. A noble person has his own words, and I should follow them. However, a monk has no personal belongings. This is the Lotus Sutra, handwritten by Master Ian. Old Wang doesn't understand scriptures, and Lu Bang doesn't even understand them. But what is stronger than Lu Bang is that Old Wang has heard of the four words, E in Jusha. I was about to reach out to pick it up, but the little monk took the lead and snatched the scripture from the big monk's hand. Master, no way. The great monk whispered, Daoji, don't act recklessly. Seeing the good news in his hand fly away again, old Wang cursed at the little monk named Daoji. Little bald donkey. The city gate is a heavy area, how can we let you throw a tantrum? As he spoke, he reached out to Daoji with one hand, grabbed his back, and lifted the whole person up. Old Wang was about to slap the little monk in the face, but he heard a snap sound and a whip hit his hand. He couldn't stop feeling the pain, and his grip on Daoji's hand ran out of strength, causing him to fall to the ground. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Misunderstandings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Misunderstandings, what a dirty servant who doesn't have long eyes. How many bird heads do you have to kill? At first glance, everyone saw two people sitting on a large horse, and the one who wielded the whip was the one who was leading the reins. Who is this person? Old Wang's conduct is not good, so it is naturally his fault to demand money from passers-by here. But without distinguishing the reason, someone dares to directly harm others. Lu Bang was about to speak, but he heard a sound of Amitba Buddha, again. However, this time, it was not what the great monk had said. Master Fohai didn't give a lecture at Nantai Zen Temple. How did he return to Linen? After jumping off the horse, another monk appeared. Doji saw the person and quickly got up from the ground. Master Tan Hui. You came so cleverly. The monk named Tan Hui patted Daoji's head and exchanged a Buddha salute with his master before saying to Old Wang. The general was shocked. Both of them are masters of the Guoqing Temple and have innocent identities. Could you please let them go into the city? 
Old Wang covered his hand with his head, and sweat oozed from his forehead. He spoke a little slower, and immediately the person's whip swung back. It's the mute medicine that poisoned your servant's throat. Master Tan Hui is speaking to you. Lu Bang watched with his own eyes as the whip came over and quickly jumped to the side to avoid being caught in the pool. However, Old Wang didn't have that much luck. He ate the whip solidly on his shoulder, and although he wore armor, it still hurt him and made him grin. What the master said is. Little people have eyes that don't recognize noble people, and they missed a few masters' time. Damn it, damn it. As he spoke, he slapped himself twice in the face with a crisp voice. Lu Bang couldn't see the appearance of a soldier, let alone his father. In. Law. Pointing at the person on the horse and cursing. This hairless Kuan person is your wild father. How dare you harm the city gate guard for these few people? What the hell are you doing? Although old Wang was at fault first, it is necessary to investigate carefully. Riding a horse is a crime. However, he shouted, Kuanren, in his mouth, which made the two big monks on the side look embarrassed. Hee hee, it's really strange. There are mice in Linen City that can be seen just an inch away. The person laughed instead of getting angry and said, What does your father do? Just ask the old slut next to you, and he will tell you. Although he didn't know why Lu Bang kept speaking for him, old Wang ignored the pain and pulled at his sleeve, saying, Xiangang. You have poked a hole in the sky. The old man is leaving your love, please leave quickly. When he asked Lu Bang to leave quickly, the whip followed him again. Dirty and chaotic. You're so naughty. The two of them were too close together, and they were about to be struck twice with one arrow by this person. Fortunately, Lu Bang was also a person who had experienced many battles. He reacted very quickly and changed his position with Lao Wang Tu, hiding in his arms. While hiding, his mouth never stopped. Son, you hit your father. Old Wang's eyes were filled with tears, and Lu Bang ignored his sorrowful expression. Before the whip could be retracted, he grabbed the tail of the whip with one hand and then pulled it hard with both hands that person is used to being domineering on weekdays, and he never prepared for being bullied. He fell off his horse and lost two front teeth on the spot. The speech was delayed, but the entire action was completed in one go, just an instant. The few people present were all stunned in place. But Lu Bang refused to give up and immediately followed suit, kicking towards the person's body. The rest of the guards who had been ignoring this place saw that the person had suffered a great loss and had not even checked the road signs. They all put down their work and surrounded them. However, during this gap, Lu Bang's leg movements never stopped. In his previous life, he was a skilled player in Kuju, and his leg movements were more proficient than his hand movements. Kicking that person so that he cried and called out to his mother, causing old Wang's head to tremble with fear, and making Buddhist monk Fohai cover Doji's eyes with one hand, constantly reciting Amitba Buddha. When the knife and gun reached Lu Bang's neck, he stopped. They all eat dry food. Getting up from the ground, this person first spat blood foam and then pointed at the noses of the guards and cursed loudly. Then he looked at Lu Bang. The thief was really his mother. You twisted bird. I'm afraid you won't die today. Beat your grandfather so badly. After speaking, he waved his hand and wanted to make it towards Lu Bang's face, but he just threw his hand over and was caught by Lu Bang. Subsequently, Emperor Gaozu of Han opened his mouth and bit the man's tiger mouth. Pull it off. Hurry up, pull it off. Qin Lu's tears were painful, and a group of guards quickly broke their mouths and legs, finally taking him off Qin Lu Ye's body. I. Qin Lu Ben wanted to wave his hand and go again, but after thinking about it, he realized that this bird servant belongs to the dog family. Why bother with him? He doesn't want to die, his body is precious. I'm afraid you'll die without understanding. Zhao Guanjia is ranked first in Linen City, and Laozi is ranked sixth, out of Linen City, 
Lousy is the first. I told you, you can report your hometown and family background, and I will also entrust two last words for your family. Although the last time we fought like this was over a thousand years ago, Lu Bang is not a novice at this moment. Just like this person, he let go and swung around, five or six of them were not a problem. Just he had no doubt that with just one movement, these guards would poke several holes in him. At present, until the situation arose, he suddenly changed his face and smiled, saying. My eyes were clumsy and I couldn't recognize the nobleman. I beg for mercy from you, but if you let me go, it's all a misunderstanding. So sincere, it seems that the person who just cursed and bit someone was someone else. Xiao Daoji saw through the cracks of the Buddha C's fingers and couldn't help but show a little more disdain towards this person. But seeing him unwilling to reveal his background and instead pleasing himself like this, this person also had a concern in his heart. It doesn't seem like a play about pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger. Yes, he has seen most of the people in linen who cannot afford to offend. At this moment, he couldn't help but feel a bit amused by his own caution. He was in pain and looked at Lu Bang fiercely, shouting loudly. There are bandits breaking through the city gate at night. Hurry up and take them. As soon as these words were spoken, the guards looked at each other, but they dared not take action first. A group of losers. Seeing no one taking action, the man drew a waste knife from someone next to him and struck at Lu Bang's head. Damn it, you really dare to take action. Wait a minute. It was already this time, and Lu Bang didn't care about anything else. He flashed slightly to the side. Almost bumped into the head of the guard's gun. He had no time to pay attention, just lifted his foot and kicked the man's wrist. However, this foot did not kick the knife away, and the knife was only slightly off course, still sliding towards Lu Bang. This son is guarding. This grandson is guarding. I haven't seen you for so long and haven't come to take a look. It's something that looks useless. He was extremely anxious in his heart, but he didn't stop complaining about Yang Yijong. However, this knife ultimately did not fall on Lu Bang. The Buddhist monk who shouted loudly, wait a minute, helped Lu Bang carry this on his back. Master. Seeing the redness on Fo Hai's body, the little monk's tears immediately flowed out. Amitba Buddha, said the monk Tan Hui beside him, Qin Liuye, Master Fohai has formed a cause and effect relationship with this benefactor. Let's just let it go. Tan Hui seemed to speak with great weight, but Qin Liuye did not immediately agree. Tan Hui said again, this trip has already been delayed, I'm afraid it will disturb the affairs of Qin Xiang. Qin Liuye finally regained his senses and whispered a few words to the nearby guard before apologizing with a smile. The master's words are reasonable, but we cannot delay great things for this person's lowly life. After speaking, he lifted Tan Hui onto his horse and gave Lu Bang a glare before riding away. But Lu Bang himself, looking at the monk in front of him, did not know why he had to do so. Fo Hai's face was pale, and he clasped his hands together and said. Don't do this again next time. After speaking, he fell towards Lu Bang. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Inviting Guests to Dine You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Inviting Guests to Dine, Xiao Xiangong, Turn back and after passing the Imperial Academy, you will find a Qin family clinic. Take this master over quickly. All the disasters were caused by Lao Wang Tu alone. At this moment, he felt a little disheartened, but still urged Lu Bang to leave quickly. The Qian Tang Gate tonight is truly a place of controversy. In fact, he didn't need to say that Lu Bang was already ready to leave, but only took one step when he was stopped by the guard. Ji Wu, what the hell are you blocking? Ji Wu hesitated a bit and said, Old Wang Tu, Qin Liuye just instructed me, but I can't leave. Unless I intentionally made things difficult, you know, if I violate Qin Liuye's orders, I won't have a good end for myself. Is that Qin Liuye your superior? Why are you so afraid of him? 
Lu Bang was also a bit anxious, asking questions while speaking to the crying doji. Xiao Kuan, don't cry anymore. There are a few friends waiting for me behind me. Hurry up and let the larger one come over to take your master to the hospital first. Doji sobbed and said, how can I recognize them? You don't need to know, just remember the one who is taller. If you continue to slow down, you may miss your master's life. The little monk was frightened and quickly ran away. After Daoji had run away, old Wang Tu said. Xiao Xiangong's questioning is probably not from Linen Prefecture. Although Qin Liuye is not our superior, even if the commander of the infantry division comes, he cannot be ignored. So he is a high dot ranking official in the court. Lu Bang weighed his body, allowing Monk Fohai to lean more properly. But it's not either. Imperial relatives and nobles. Old Wang shook his head and said, not really. Then he's your father. What kind of situation are you trying to sell? Ji Wu spoke up and said, you talented person, you have caused a huge disaster on your own, but you still don't know. You don't know Qin in Linen City, you must have heard the name of the current prime minister. Qin Hui, is this his son? A dog can't spit out ivory from its mouth. Qin Liuye is one of the nine butlers in the prime minister's mansion. Now you have a better understanding of death. He's just. Lu Bang couldn't believe it, a butler of the Qin family. Old Wang said, Ziyak Xiangdong, you have offended a noble person because of me. I am extremely grateful in my heart. I just don't know your name or where you live, so I can drag someone to take a message for you. If you still have money at home, I will let it go and exchange your life. No, Lu Bang still didn't understand. Isn't he just a butler? Why did you make me feel like I'm going to die? Just a butler, even if it's the butler of the prime minister's mansion, it's just a butler. And this butler almost took his own life just now. Xiao He, Xiao He, why aren't your family members so domineering? Sigh. Old Wang let out a long sigh, and even though he had already talked about it, he still didn't understand. This person's mind was not very good. In the distance, the tall figure could already be seen approaching, and Lu Bang felt relieved. He remembered the name of Qin Lu and joked to the old prince. Old Wang, since you said I'm going to die soon, then I'll treat myself as if I'm going to die soon. But after all, this life was lost because of you. How should you repay me? You don't want to reveal your family background either. When the time comes, the little old man will collect the body for you and burn some paper money for you during holidays, which can be considered a reward. Not enough, not enough. So what else do you want? Lu Bang smiled and said, Do you have a daughter in your family? If you marry me, it can be considered a reward. Pooh. Old Wang scolded angrily, but you're not a good person. My elder sister is serving the Zhao family in the palace, isn't it something you can get? In that case, you have to treat me to a full meal. This requirement is not excessive, but what neither of them expected was that Ji Wu was the first to agree and spoke in agreement. This meal is delicious. At least they lost their life for you. Old Wang, don't be stingy with your money. I invited him to eat, but what does this matter to you? If you treat someone to a meal, you have to treat them like you do. Outside the city gate and by the west lake, there are places to eat everywhere, if you take him there, I naturally have to follow. Why don't you let me eat together? Ji Wu's abacus played quite loudly, but old Wang stopped working. Don't you see what kind of despicable fate you are? That's where you can go to eat by West Lake. If you keep eating, you won't have to eat for a year. After cursing, he looked at Lu Bang again and said, Xiao Xiangong is not from Linen, so naturally you shouldn't listen to him talking nonsense. If you want to eat, you can choose any restaurant in this city. I have never valued money. Lu Bang nodded and said, I only want to see things if I haven't seen them before. When we come out of the city, we really don't know the scenery outside. Now, you should pity me and show me the world. 
Ji Wuzan said, Old Wang, you said you don't value money. Don't swallow what you spit out again. Seeing that Old Wang was still hesitating, Ji Wu said again, If it weren't for this Xiangong's help, how much trouble would you have suffered today? Old Wang, you must think carefully for yourself. Damn it, didn't you not allow this chancellor to leave? How about having a meal with me alone? You've been hesitant to speak, but can't bear to part with me. It's fortunate that your son is still working there, and you can't even get a little discount. Eat. Old Wang finally blurted out the word from between his teeth, and then he looked at Ji Wu and said, It's a bargain, you idiot. If the three lashes struck by Qin Lu made him suffer, then he is now experiencing visible heartache. Yang Yi and Daoji finally walked over. He was about to bow, but was interrupted by Lu Bang and said, Quickly take this Kuan. Monk to the clinic, find the best doctor, use the best medicine. Anyway, just one sentence, people must be okay. As a soldier, Yang Yijong's tall figure and the bloody smell he carried made many guards look at him. Ji Wu put away his playful smile and stared at him intently, afraid that he would do something irrational. Yes. Yang Yijong's answer remained simple. He took the Buddha C from Lu Bang's hand and only touched the wound a little, knowing that it was not a big deal. He bowed to Lu Bang and left holding someone in his arms. Such a big monk in his arms is like Daoji in Lu Bang's arms. The little monk also wanted to follow, but was grabbed by Lu Bang's collar. You won't be able to help even if you go with me. Why don't you come with me and have a full meal? After speaking, regardless of Dorj's desperate struggle, he carried him on his shoulder. Old Wang saw another person and wanted to say something, but he realized that he was a child and a monk. He moved his mouth, but ultimately couldn't say anything. Ji Wu ran up to the city tower to pay the bill, but despite his reputation as Qin Lu, no one dared to make things difficult for them. Three big, one small, and a group of four walked towards the outside of the city. Lu Bang originally thought he needed to take a step further, but to his surprise, within a few hundred steps, he had already seen the light. And it was only then that he realized that most of the people who left the city were coming in this direction. The closer you walk, the brighter the lights will be. Climbing a few steps, in this dark night, the vast west lake appeared in front of him. Then, he froze in place. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Cannot do without you. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Cannot do without you There is no moon tonight, but Lu Bang can see it clearly. This west lake is filled with boats of different sizes and shapes, with a rough count of up to ten. On the shore, there were even more stalls for various types of food and objects than he had seen in the city, pedestrians come and go endlessly, and various sounds are heard endlessly. Where is this like a defeated country? Where is it like losing half of the country and nestling south of the Huai River? Even in the former Xianyang and later Chang'an, Lu Bang had never seen such. The Prime Minister of a Prosperous Era, yes, it is the Prime Minister of a Prosperous Era. He suspected that he had misheard Qin Hui's words and misread the map that had been drawn by Cinnabar. Seeing this person's dementia, Ji Wu felt extremely proud. Outsider, you are so fortunate. At the time of the Jingkong campaign, I was still young and had never been to Bianjing, but in a bustling place like Linan Prefecture, there must be no second place in the world. Now that you are facing a great crisis, you can still broaden your horizons, which is not a disadvantage. Upon hearing him talk about Bianjing, the old king sneered, You ignorant coward. You are not much better than this Xiangong. Turning towards Lu Bang again, he said, Since it's here, don't delay the time. Qin Liuye doesn't know when he will come over to trouble you. You should find more joy as soon as possible. Do you mean that Bianjing is even more lively than here? It's not just lively. Lao Wang Tu led the way in front, and Lu Bang saw that the little monk was no longer struggling. He put him down and lightened the burden on his shoulders, but still firmly grasped his wrist, afraid that he would take the opportunity to run around. 
There are only a little more people in West Lake in Linen, but in Bianjing, the morning market, the Japanese market, the night market, the four cities in spring, summer, autumn and winter, and the three cities on Qixi, mid-autumn and New Year's Eve, there is no better market than here. The four of them walked all the way and stopped at one shore. Old Wang waved not far away and a small boat rowed over. If you encounter a Buddhist ceremony at the Daxianguo Temple, it's hard to even find a place to stand on the street. Lu Bang was lost in thought and Ji Wu asked, if we were to go out on the street at that time, wouldn't we be able to face each other and talk to each other with the little ladies? This person's perspective is quite tricky. Lu Bang didn't even think of going there himself. Old Wang scolded with a smile, what's the point of being in contact with your silver gun wax head, kid? Lu Bang scolded, there's still a little kuan here. You two should speak more cleanly. After speaking, he covered Daoji's ears with his hand and then let out a lewd laugh with the two of them. The ship arrived at the shore and old Wang said, the ship from Sibei Tower has three people. The person on the ship glanced and said, it's clear that there are only four. This doll's fur is not even there, why do you count him in? If you want to take a boat, then you have to calculate. After some bargaining, both of them took a step back and counted Daoji in half. After boarding the boat, the person headed towards the larger boat in the lake, climbed up the ladder on the side of the boat, and threw more than ten copper coins to old Wang, instructing him. When I go back, it's still the same price. The person didn't answer, counted the numbers, and then rowed away again. After boarding the ship, Old Wang felt like a different person, no longer stingy as before, and shouted loudly. Wang Shower. Your father is here. A young man wearing a felt hat ran out of the cabin and looked at several people before finally complaining. Dad. Why are you here again? There's no more credit available here. Old Wang slapped his face. I almost lost my life just now. Thanks to this Xiangong. You're such a dog, but you're arguing with me about money here. Hurry up and set up a table, thank you for saving my life early. Wang Shower covered his face and yawned towards Lu Bang before running back into the cabin. In no time, when she came out again, she was a flamboyant woman. Gentlemen, please come inside. Old Wang laughed wildly and slapped the woman's buttocks. The crisp sound was somewhat similar to the slap he had just slapped himself with. Once inside, the group was led to the private box on the left and sat down. The woman then asked. Do you guys want to listen to music or talk to someone? Listen to some nonsense music. Hurry up and serve the dishes, then call the girl who is talking over. After a pause, Old Wang said again, You see, there are only three people. That's a little master. The woman responded and left the door. Old Wang Tu and Ji Wu took off their armor and cursed. These prostitutes always pretend to be serious when they come, and in the end, it's just that kind of thing. Lu Bang had long understood the true meaning of this meal, but he only got up from bed in the evening, still in the sage mode, and his interest was not too high. I only had my first contact with this country tonight, but it brought him a lot of questions. Speaking. Someone had already started serving the dishes, and Lu Bang poured wine for the two. When he saw Daoji coming in, he closed his eyes and felt a bit amused. He also poured a glass for the young monk. Why are you so afraid of the steward of the Qin mansion? even though you are both guards of a city gate and should be responsible for guarding the gate courtyard for the emperor. Seeing him ask this again, both Ji Wu and Lao Wang Tu were somewhat silent. Old Wang said, speaking of this, you really don't know if you're still making fun of us, Xiang Gong. If you're confused, you can speak and answer clearly, but if you're normal, you're asking questions like this. After drinking a glass of water and wine, Old Wang's face immediately turned red and he continued. Do you know that Marshal Han and Marshal Yu have been recalled to Beijing? Lu Bang nodded and said, I have heard of it. That's it. This battle must be unbeatable. What should we do if we can't continue? A peace agreement. 
It's just a peace agreement. Since we need a peace agreement, wouldn't the Zhao official family be even more dependent on Qin Xiang? The entire court and the people will have to listen to Qin Xiang in the future. Hmm. Lu Bang was very puzzled. If we have a peace agreement, why can't we leave Qin Xiang? Ji Wu Cheng sighed and said, I've heard about this too. When Qin Xiang followed Emperor Hui and Emperor Qin northward, he gained the trust of Gu Han and Ta Lao. Now that Jin State has achieved great success in martial arts, although this bandit will not die from the destruction of our Song dynasty, he still has good relations with Qin Xiang. It is said that the reason why Jin State is going to negotiate this time is because of Qin Xiang's face. So, Lu Bang raised his glass and paused, that's really unavoidable. Qin was already in power, and now the Zhao family needs him very much. As the saying goes, if one person gets the way, the rooster and the dog will ascend to heaven. Not to mention that we can't afford to offend Qin Liuya, how many people in Linen Mansion are trying to please them. So, Xiang Gong, you just need to enjoy yourself later and don't overthink anything else. If we can't win, we have to talk. If you want to talk, you can't do without Qin Hui. After sorting out this simple relationship, Lu Bang has a rough understanding. However, my heart seemed to be blocked by something, and I couldn't say it. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Who He Is You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Who He Is Linen City, Qin Xiangfu Qin Hui's eyelids twitched violently, and he had already known about the emperor leaving the palace in his humble attire. According to common sense, Zhao's construction of a palace is nothing significant. However, for over a day now, the emperor has been too abnormal, making him somewhat uncertain about his pulse. It wasn't until Master Tan Hui, who Qin Lu had invited from Lingyin Temple, arrived that Qin Xiangya felt a little more at ease. But Qin Lu's face was scarred and his front teeth were gone. When he spoke, his mouth was dark and ugly. Thinking of this linen city again, who dares to touch the people of Qin Xiangfu? Isn't it just such a coincidence that I met the Zhao official family in humble attire? So he asked Qin Ludao, I asked you to pick up the master, but why have you become like this? Returning to Xiangye's words, it's just that I met a rogue who was killed by a thief on the way here and got into some entanglement with him. What a scoundrel! Please speak more clearly. Qin Lu rarely saw his own master so urgent, so he told the story of the city gate in detail. It was said that he was alone and had personally touched Qin Lu, so Qin Hui's heart finally let go. With Xiao Laojiu's bones that were afraid of death, he definitely dared not fight. Moreover, if Qin Lu had bumped into him, he would have been brutally cut to death by the people of the pro-military department. Well, Qin Hui nodded, as if remembering something, and asked, where's big brother? Qin Lu flattered and said, I met you on the way here. It should be on a boat at West Lake now. Humph. He's actually happy every day. After speaking, he instructed Qin Lu again, go tell him not to cause trouble tonight and come back earlier. Qin Lu Ben was already planning to go back and teach Lu Bang a lesson, but this trip happened to be on the way. As he was eager, he readily agreed. After waiting for someone to go, Qin Hui finally pulled Tan Hui into the room and told him what he wanted to entrust. Na Si Bei Lu was originally the name of the largest restaurant in Linen City. Just seeing the bustling business on the other side of West Lake, I bought a ship from a businessman from Mingzhou two years ago and renovated it. The original cabin only had one floor, and the owner of this Si Bei building added two more floors, which gave the ship a name in West Lake. Lu Bang and the others were on the first floor. At this point, the wine had already passed half a patrol, and both old Wang Tu and Ji Wu were dealing with the prostitutes around them. Lu Bang didn't have much elegance, and he was afraid that Daoji was still young and had a bad mental state. So he drank a few glasses of wine from the young monk, making him drunk. Bored, he started talking to the girl next to him. Your accent doesn't sound like this person. 
The woman covered her mouth with a fan and smiled, the official came here to ask me this. So you are really generous. Lu Bang didn't think much of it. Then ask something else, you don't know either. Oh. The woman leaned against Lu Bang and leaned on his shoulder, saying, you might as well ask, maybe I'll know. Do you think Song Dynasty was poor? I don't know how many officials and scholars there are in Linen Prefecture, and I don't know how many of them like to have sex with prostitutes. Most of these people like to talk about family and national affairs after drinking. However, in the end, it ultimately fell onto the little work of men and women. Now, as soon as this person asked, she naturally regarded him as one of the people in this category. Not poor, the poor are the common people. Our Song dynasty was very wealthy. After speaking, without waiting for Lu Bang to ask again, she continued, Are you sure you still want to ask me, is that because our army is weak? There are those who ask and answer themselves, and those who speak out of their own words are really rare. So, are you weak? If it's weak, Marshal Han and Marshal Yu can always win battles, but if it's not weak, you see, I still can't go back and offer incense to my parents. Now you're going to ask, if that's the case, why don't we just fight back? Lu Bang was calm and said, why? He he he. You really can ask. I am a woman of the high school, and I don't know much about family and country affairs. It's just a joke. Officials should not take it seriously. Look, what you all know, then this world should be well dot known to everyone, but you don't want to say it. Or you dare not say it. So I'm going to ask, but why? Because the emperor is not capable. Looking at the day's daoji, Lu Bang handed a chicken leg to him, and the little monk sniffed it in his arms before taking a small bite. However, in this private room, it was a bit chilly because of his words. The few people who had been listening all along, Old Wang was stunned and explained to the person in his arms with a smile, this Xiangong is not very clever. He should only be talking while drunk. The person sitting on Ji Wu's lap was somewhat dissatisfied and said, even if you're drunk, you shouldn't speak recklessly. If it gets out, how many people on this ship can be won over? Even the woman next to Lu Bang was surprised when she heard this, only showing an awkward smile on her face. Officer, you have drunk too much. Not at all. As he spoke, Lu Bang swallowed another cup and gently slid his hand over the woman's waist. I had a friend before, and we should be from the same hometown. He's from Inchuan, he said, speaking of Inchuan, it shouldn't be far from Bianjing, right? Don't look at me like that. I think you should still have a chance to go back and burn incense for your parents. The woman had intended to speak again, but heard a loud noise outside, as if something had fallen off. Then, footsteps, screams, and arguments all came in. What's wrong with this? The person in old Wang's arm sat up, and everyone kept looking towards the direction outside the door, only to see Lu Bang opening the door first and walking out. And not just him, all the private rooms on the first floor. Or rather all the private rooms in the entire Sibei building, people walked out. Ji Wu and Lao Wang arrived at his side, and a table fell from the hall. Fortunately, it didn't hit anyone. Looking up, I saw that it was originally on the third floor and someone had a dispute. The group on the left consisted of about a dozen people, and people kept going upstairs to join their camp. Soon, more than twenty people gathered. And the one on the right is much uglier, with only two people. Apart from the younger leader, the one behind him is noticeably weaker. If there is really a fight, this person may suffer greatly. Lao Wang Tu and Ji Wu met and exchanged a glance before whispering, there's a good show to watch. Do you know each other? That, the old king whispered, is the young master of Qin Xiangye. Oh. This is Qin Hui's son, why doesn't it feel too similar? Old Wang quickly pulled down his sleeve and said, don't talk nonsense. Later, he said, it's not the biological child of the prime minister, it was adopted from the elder brother of the prime minister's wife. Well, Lu Bang nodded, who is this? 
But the young man who acted alone, Ji Wu and Lao Wang Tu, no longer knew each other. However, the two of them were also strange. Why did so many innocent people today offend Qin Yuya first, but now it's better? Even the little prince dared to offend. Fortunately, they didn't hesitate for long. Because of Qin Hui's son, Qin Hui pointed at the person and cursed. Yu Yun, you little rascal. You went back to Linen but didn't report to the Privy Council. You just wanted to rebel. As soon as the name Yu Yun was given, the spectators of this Sibei Tower looked shocked. Only Lu Bang is still asking, who is he? End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Needle Tip to Wheat On You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 10 Needle Tip to Wheat On At the age of 16, General Xiao followed Marshal Yu on his expedition. He was the first to climb to the top of Suezhou City, which he had been unable to conquer for a long time. When suppressing Yang Yao, the young general also repeatedly made great achievements. Last year, Wan Yan Wushu led the elite of the Jin dynasty, but was defeated by the Shao general and the Bei Wei army in Yancheng. After the great defeat of Yancheng, the Jin army changed their attack on Yingchang with a force of 100000, while the Yu family army only guarded 30,000 troops in the city at that time. What should you do? Ji Wu and Lao Wang Tu spoke together, and the more they spoke, the more excited they became, and the more they spoke, the more interested they became. The expression on his face was even more excited than when he was in the private room just now. This young talent is somewhat similar to Lu Che's Hu Tsubing. Lu Bang remembered the scene of Fong Lang Jushu clearly. At this moment, he saw the young man and heard the descriptions of the two people beside him, overlapping the figures of Hu Tsubing and Yu Yun. How's it going? Old Wang's head spat and said, Marshal Yu said to the Major General's army, If we win this battle, it's enough. If we don't win, we'll be the first to chop off your head. As a result, the Major General led his army to charge and kill dozens of times, killing people like blood and horses like blood. When the morale of the Jin army was low after a long attack, he led 5,000 troops to open the city and kill the Golden Dog in one fell swoop. In this battle, Xia Jinwu, the son dot in dot law of Wan Yan Wushu, was executed, and 78 leaders of the Jin army, big and small, were captured alive. At the end, the old man was almost exhausted, indicating his excitement. Since then, Ji Wu finally had the opportunity to speak, Wan Yan Wushu was scared out of his wits by the Yu family army, leaving only one sentence. Lu Bang became increasingly interested and said, let's talk about everything together, don't try to make a fuss. It's easy to shake the mountains, but difficult to shake the Yu family army. Okay. Lu Bang's imagination of the Jin man has long lost the timidity that Qin Hui described at the beginning. At least for now, the Jin people are not invincible. However, he still remembered the three words Yu family army in his heart. Returning upstairs, Yu Yun faced Qin Su's accusations but did not answer. When he returned to Linen this time, he had already rushed ahead of his father, and the thin and frail middle dot aged man beside him was the strategist of Yu Fei's army, Shui Bai. As for why we had to take the lead, Yu Fei tacitly agreed to this. Most of the people in the court came from the family of Qin Hui. This time, the Zhao officials of the Great Song Dynasty urgently summoned Yu Fei back to the capital, and they were unsure of his attitude. But one thing that can be confirmed is that according to Zhao Laojiu's temperament, Yu Fei's repeated disobedience should be extremely angry in his heart. If in previous years, Yu Fei's official position would have been lost, and he himself had also resigned, but this year is different. They have all reached Jusian town this year, and Wan Yan Wushu has abandoned Kaifeng to cross the river and flee north. With only a 45-mile journey, they can return to Bianjing city. It was only 40.5 miles, but Yu Fei couldn't finish it. However, there is also hope. As long as the officials make up their minds to fight, Yu Fei has already gone through this northern expedition four times, and walking again is not impossible. 
So the second thing Yu Yun did when he returned was to contact the officials of the main battle faction in the court and persuade the Zhao official family again. If it's okay, then it's okay. If it's not okay, for so many years the emperor has been jumping back and forth between war and peace. He's not tired, and Yu Fei himself is also tired. Today, here, Yu Yun made an appointment with the current Minister of Rights, Su Zhonghu, the envoy of Hijin Jingdan. I chose this place because I didn't want to be known by others. Unexpectedly, as soon as I arrived, I ran into an enemy. He rarely comes to Linen, and the court's desire to appoint officials was also rejected by Yu Fei on the grounds of being young. However, he does have a clever name in the Beiwei army, and it is indeed appropriate for him to report to the Privy Council in Linen. How did Qin Su recognize it? It's just that Xue Bai and Qin Hui have old acquaintances, and the two sides are not far apart. Qin Hui first recognized Xue Bai, so he went to say hello and told him to escape from the Yu family army earlier, because Yu Fei would soon be in danger. After all, it was still a youthful nature. Yu Yun listened to his various rude descriptions of his father, and disregarded Xue Bai's various hints, he directly greeted Qin Su's face a few times. These slaps made Qin Su both shocked and angry, and he directly called out his name, as soon as he got off the battlefield, Yu Yun refused to show any weakness and told him his name. In this way, it has become the current scene. Seeing a fierce battle inevitable, the madam in charge of the Seabay building also came upon hearing the news, but on one side was the young master of the current prime minister, and on the other side was the infamous young general. The madam eventually accepted the blame and instructed her subordinates to prepare the boat to prevent the injured person from landing and delaying the time. In the end, she blamed the head of the Seabay Tower, also, someone was asked to contact the carpenter in advance and only prepared to reinstall the ship again, call someone to notify the linen prefecture office again, and never cause any harm here, finally, I contacted the owner, and no matter what, either party suffered losses and gained some money afterwards. After some operation, no one could stop them anymore. I saw Yu Yun helping Shui Bai to the side and pointing at Qin Su, saying. You insulted my father like this, I should have killed you. Just kill you and keep me alive, I'm afraid my father will find it difficult to do. You need to apologize before we can resolve this matter today. This young man is also intelligent and not a reckless man. Faced with Qin Su's accusations, he avoided discussing them, which instead led him to speak ill of Yu Fei first. In this way, Qin Su's rationality also became unreasonable. However, as a young prime minister, the butler in the family is still so domineering, let alone himself. After listening to Yu Yun's words, Qin Su was extremely angry and laughed back. He brought this group of second ancestors from Linen City to find fun. Who didn't bring a few guards and servants? Now that Yu Yun is alone, how dare he speak so wildly? At Qin Su's command, the twenty or so people rushed towards Yu Yun together. If it were on the battlefield, Yu Yun might still be shocked this time. But these people have no swords, and the stairs are narrow, so in Yu Yun's eyes, these people are really like dirt, chicken, tiles, and dogs. As soon as the two leaders rushed towards him, they were punched by him with both fists on the storefront. In an instant, one of them broke their nose bridge and the other had swollen eyes, each covering their faces and howling in pain. But then he immediately followed two more people, one of whom was thrown down from the third floor by him. Although he did not die from the fall, he could no longer get up, while the other was lifted up by him and thrown towards the person coming behind, overwhelming them all at once. Okay. Okay. The more Lu Bang looked at this kid, the more he liked it in his heart. If he had fought with him back then he came to his senses, and now he's not following himself. Qin Su became more and more fearful as he looked at it, while Lu Bang became hotter and hotter as he saw another fall and even went up to patch his feet. Lao Wang Tu and Ji Wu saw this situation and pulled Lu Bang towards the private room, but they didn't want a voice to come from behind. All right. You two have so much courage to show this bandit who broke through the city gate. 
you're so lucky, you brought him here to drink flower wine. It's so easy for me to find him all the way. The three of them turned around together, only to see that Qin Liuye had arrived, and behind him was a group of guards from the Qin family. Isn't it true that you and him are on the same journey? Qin Liuye spoke louder and louder, making old Wang Tu and Ji Wuxin almost vomit out, especially Ji Wuxin. He couldn't have imagined that Qin Liuye would come back so quickly, and he was still thinking about how he could get tomorrow morning. But soon, Qin Lu saw Qin Su upstairs and the young man waving his fist. Seeing that there were fewer and fewer people in front of Qin Su, Qin Lu shouted loudly. Don't be surprised, Xiaoxiangong. Qin Lu is here. End of this chapter.